Hi, yogis. My name is Marlena. Uh, I'm going to explain uh, with a little bit more detail Ustrasana pose, in other words, camel pose. So if you have been following my Finyasa Krama on, uh, or towards Ustrasana camel pose, then this could be very helpful. So um, let's come and sit onto the mat and then begin with tucking your toes under. You place your knees hip distance apart. As you roll your toes under, you come and sit onto your heels. Now, this could be quite challenging for you, right? You would like to, to do this instead of this, right? But here's the thing. It's a modification. Because if you have your toes rolled under, your heels are higher, and then the back bend towards the heels is, is less, right? This is way more deeper, deeper back bend if you have your feet down into the floor. So with the toes tucked under, come and sit onto your heels. You have to bear it if this is challenging for you. But it's also a very good foot stretch. And then lift your hi hips. Place your hands onto your hips for a moment. I'm going to ask you to tilt your pelvis forward. This is very awkward. And you very much over-exaggerate into the curve of your lower back. Of course, I'm not going to ask you to move into a back bend like that. I just want you to activate a little bit the core. So from here, you draw the belly back to the spine, that part above your pubic bone. And then notice how you form the pelvic tilt, right? The tailbone lengthens down. So do that again. Tilt your pelvis forward. There's a contraction or compression into your lower back. And then as you move the lower belly in and up, you have the pelvic tilt, the tailbone lengthens down, and there's no compression in your lower back. Bring your hands at the back of your hips. As you press your hands onto the back of the hips, the buttock muscles stretch into the back of the thighs, and then as you stay long into your lower back, you lift from the pubic bone towards your sternum. Feel the stretch from the pubic bone towards the sternum. And then you make your arch, right? And then the arch should happen way more into the mid-back than into the lower back. You try to stay long into the lower back. And then slowly coming back, you lift the heart when you come out of the pose. And then come and sit onto your heels. Bring your hands onto your heels now. And then as you press your hands onto your heels, you lift the hips and you move your hips forward until they come in line with your knees. And then as you press your hands onto your heels, you feel your shoulder blades go deeper into your back. Again, you try as much as possible to keep the lower back long. So the lower belly is in, the tailbone is long, and the arch, the back bend, is more into the mid-back than into the lower back. And then you feel the support of the shoulder blades into the back. This is opening the chest. You can let your head go if you have that possibility, if it feels okay in the neck and in the shoulders. If that doesn't feel okay, have your chin parallel to your chest. And then breathe into the pose. And then slowly bring your hips down to your heels. Before you do anything else again, just relax and release for a moment into the child's pose. Guide your breath into your lower back. Feel that breath expanding into your lower back. And then release the breath out. Now slowly begin to roll all the way up. Now, thank you very much for watching. Hope it was helpful and looking forward to your comments. Thank you. Namaste. And on your exhalation, release. Step your right foot back, all fours position. And then from all fours position, you follow your hips forward, you bend your elbows and you move down to the floor. <laughs> 